even with a much smaller episode of NXT this week, NXT and NXT UK managed to pull out an amazing Wednesday night. The midweek wrap of this week was fantastic. I'm Travis Cole. Let's talk about it. So NXT UK opened up with Dave Mastiff defeating uh, Primate. Primate is a really cool guy that I think this is now the second time we've seen him on NXT UK. I hope he sticks around because I really like his whole gimmick, but Dave Mastiff still undefeated, picking up a win over him. Uh, We had a vignette about uh, Zaya Brookside. She's going to be in action next week. Um, And not necessarily next week, but soon we found out via Sid Scala who the Grizzled Young Vets will soon defend the NXT UK Tag Team Championships against, and it'll be Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. Uh, and it'll probably happen, um, so Sid started talking about, uh, NXT UK going to Phoenix, and so we have the Worlds Collide thing that's supposed to be happening this Saturday, which was actually taped over Rumble weekend, and so it's gonna be a tournament thing that kinda keeps going, and so we've got that, um, like, that tag team title match is probably going to be a part of the broadcast, including... Also in three weeks, uh, Rhea Ripley demanded a rematch against Tony Storm, and so she's going to be getting her rematch for the NXT UK Women's Championship. That's also going to be happening. Uh, it's going to be happening in three weeks, so that'll probably also be a part of the uh, the broadcast that will be the Worlds Collide for however long that goes. Uh, we're also next week on NXT UK. We're going to get Ligero versus Mark Andrews. That'll be awesome. We have the debut of Walter. He destroyed Jack Stars. Uh, Mark Coffey, uh, on Walter's way back, uh, decided to get all up in his face and say, I don't know, he was just yelling a lot, saying that, oh, you want some competition. So now Walter is going to go against Mark Coffey next week. And that's a cool little. Uh, a little combination of what happened here because then he was approached by the European Union uh, to which Marcel Bartel said, hey, we've known each other a long time, so if you need friends here, you know, we've got your back. And Walter just kind of walked away. So now that Walter has booted Joe Coffee in the face, he's I, I'm pretty sure he hit Wolfgang at one point. Uh, or maybe he hasn't. Maybe that'll happen soon. But now he's going to go into Mark Coffee. It definitely looks like we're Probably going to get Walter joining the European Union and facing off against Gallus. Uh, women's action, we had Ginny defeat Casey Owens in a great match. And then in our main event, we had Mo- Mustache Mountain defeat the European Union. Uh, so Walter might not be too thrilled about teaming up with them, considering they lost on his technical first night in NXT UK. But regardless, still great match. Uh, then on NXT... Uh, post takeover, technically pre takeover. I want to go through all the little like backstage stuff that happened. First, we had uh, Johnny Gargano talking about becoming the new North American champion and that he loves winning. And we're going to see him live next week on NXT. Bianca Belair still undefeated because it's a mind. No, that's not how that works. I stand with Sam Roberts. A waste of a match. Uh, War Raiders say they have ended an era and their reign begins now. They don't plan on losing those titles anytime soon. Uh, Matt Riddle said he's done with Cassius Ono. He didn't just make him tap out. He didn't, you know, he didn't try and knock him out. He made sure to break down Cassius Ono, and he plans on breaking anyone that decides to stand in his way in NXT. Uh, we had the. This is something we didn't talk about on our Rumble review, but we are having the halftime heat this Sunday during halftime of the Super Bowl, where after NXT TakeOver, there was a big uh, situation up on the stage after we saw both members of DIY holding up their singles titles. So after the whole situation, we now have DIY and Adam Cole taking on Aleister Black, uh, Velveteen Dream, and Ricochet. That's going to be awesome. Uh, I don't really have a stake in who wins the game this week, so I'm excited to see that match. And then in our main event... Oh, no, I should probably just talk about the matches. Uh, our first match of NXT, we had the Sky Pirates, Io Shirai and Kairi Sane defeat the Horsewomen, uh, Jessamine Duke and Marina Shafir. And in the main event, another tag team match where the Forgotten Sons defeated the, Stra- <laughs> defeated the Street Profits once again. Uh, so needless to say, a lot of my likes and loves are going to be tag team matches because we had a lot of them this week. Um, 
I'll give I'll give a I'll give a like and a love for both shows for NXT UK. I'm gonna give my like to uh, Dave Mastiff versus Primate. Like I said at the beginning of this, I really like how into the gimmick Primate is. Uh, he's his mannerisms are really cool, and watching him actually break down Mastiff for a second, like I thought there was a chance that Mastiff was actually going to lose. Um, and that that lends to Mastiff as well as he you know sure he's undefeated, but he's not unfallible like he he is infallible however you say that word he's you know he's not indestructible he's he's human he's just a really big human and so the fact that Primate was actually able to get him down it makes me interested to see who's going to eventually be the first person to take down Dave Mastiff. Uh, so that's my like there. And then my love is definitely going to go to Mustache Mountain versus European Union. Uh, I mean, two fantastic tag teams. I kind of wish that we were still maybe having Mustache Mountain on a losing streak since they did lose to the Grizzled Young Vets at TakeOver. But I, I get it. It's their, like, them trying to make the comeback and be back on top of the tag team division. I get that. But the European Union are just so freaking good. Uh, their tag team moves are fantastic. The strength of Fabian Eichner on top of the speed that he has. And then just the technical savvy of Marcel Bartel and the viciousness that that guy throws. Oh, man. They are a fantastic tag team. Uh, I I love the tag, the tag team division for NXT UK is really starting to come together. The fact that you have the European Union, you have Mustache Mountain, you have Gallus. Now we've got Oni and Danny coming over. We've got, I mean, there's there's so many things to look forward to in the tag team division. I'm just, I'm excited for it to keep building. It's so good. And then over on NXT, obviously the only two matches there, uh, I'm going to give my like to the Sky Pirates versus the Horsewomen. I talked about it last week. I love the tag team dynamic between Kairi Sane and Io Shirai. I know they have a ton of history, but I don't know a lot of that back history other than the one match that they had in Lucha Underground. But it's really fun to watch. They are an exciting team. Jessamine and Marina still have some work to do, but they're still they're doing great stuff. The fact that they're they're still so early in their career and they're able to put on as good of a show as they do. Um, I mean, they also, you know, and they're going to eventually team up with Shayna and Ronda, who are doing fantastic stuff uh, in their own rights. Um, yeah, fantastic, fantastic stuff. And that's two more tag teams that we can eventually see going for the WWE Women's Tag Team titles. So that's, that's awesome. A fantastic match uh, to open it up. And then to finish it off, my love goes to Forgotten Sons and Street Profits. Now, the Street Profits love the fact that they were uh, paying homage to Harlem Heat. That was so cool. I was I was wondering what the gimmick, what the the whole like new gear was, but it was still cool. They were you know once uh, once Percy kind of kind of put that out there, I was like, oh okay, that's that's cool. I didn't I didn't even think about Harlem Heat, but yeah, that was their that was their whole thing with the attire. But the Street Profits are a fantastic team, and. One of the best things that they did, especially you know during their feud with the Mighty, is they're all fun and games until it gets down to business. And the Forgotten Sons in this match specifically were able to bring out the business side of Street Profits. And the best moment was Street Profits are doing great stuff, you know, flying around the ring, taking out Forgotten Sons, no problem. Then all of a sudden, while the referee is distracted, Jackson Riker on the outside it just wipes out Montez Ford. And there's a moment where he just sta- he just stands there and stares. And then Angelo Dawkins on the other side sees him and realizes what happened. And then they and then you know they start to like challenge each other from from across the ring. And as they start to like you know they're about to fight. That's that's what they're gonna do. You know obviously. Angelo wants to punch him in the face, but Jackson can't exactly do that because then he'll get them disqualified. All of a sudden, Wesley Blake flies out of nowhere, takes out Angelo Dawkins, tosses him back in, and they hit uh, the Memory Remains, which love the name of that. I love the name of that move. But they hit that, pick up the win. I love the the fact that they are a three person group. You know, when I think three person groups in WWE, obviously New Day are like the first ones that come to mind just because they're so, they've been a team for so long. 
and they have the ability to like distract people and get the win for each other but but to it's the same thing but it's different with the forgotten sons they're just so intense that it's like like you can't i, I don't even know how to describe it it's it, it's they, they have this aura about them where it's just like you could get sucker punched out of any direction because there's three people willing to sucker punch you. And that is a terrifying place to be. I do not want to be punched by any member of those guys. I would not want to be Montez Ford because Jackson Riker is a huge dude and I do not want to get fucking obliterated by him. But it's fun watching the Street Profits do it. So uh, a great win for the Forgotten Sons. Uh, I'm hoping that they... they're. I think now that the crowd is starting to chant at them, that's going to be better for them. Uh, I'm I'm hoping it is because I really like that team and their dynamic with the Street Profits is awesome. So I'm definitely hoping for more tag team action between the two of those. Maybe leading to the Forgotten Sons eventually taking on the War Raiders for the NXT Tag Team titles. We'll have to wait and see. But for now, that is it for the midweek wrap-up. Uh, we'll have one more video coming out this week over on our other channel, Reasonable Wrestling Fans. That's Reasonable with a W, like wrestling, uh, where we have an, an, our entire playlist of uh, punishment videos. You get to see what terrible punishment was bestowed upon me because I was terrible at guessing matches uh, for the events in Phoenix. Uh, but be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you to everyone that has already done that. If you like what we got going on here, we we urge you to push all those buttons. Check us out. Comment down below. Let us know uh, what things did you like about NXT or NXT UK. Uh, you know, I like I like to have conversations with other wrestling fans. If you're if you're just down for a conversation, it's not about who likes who better. It's none of that shit. It's just let's just talk about wrestling. That's all it is. So comment down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. Um, you also want to follow us on the various social medias down below. You can get this review and all of our regular reviews in podcast form in the SoundCloud link down below. The podcasts don't last all the time, so if you want to listen to them, you got to listen to them fast. Uh, and if you listen to them, they stay up longer. So, with that being said, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. <laughs>